Hi, this is Terry from Tree Marie Soapworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this soap. It's a layer pour and it has activated charcoal lines in between the layers. Let's get started. First, I use about a third of my water weight in distilled water ice cubes, and then I use cold distilled water for the remaining water weight, and then I measure my sodium hydroxide and my sodium lactate. This recipe makes 40 bars, and since I have to divide it by three anyway to get the three colors, off screen I am making two duplicates of what you see here. Now I'm adding my sodium hydroxide to my cold distilled water, and I'm stirring that until it's dissolved, and I set it aside with my sodium lactate in a well ventilated area that's safe from any kids or pets and I just let it cool until I'm ready for it. Next I measure my hard oils and get them ready to melt. So I start with my coconut oil and then I measure my sustainable palm oil. I'm using two different kinds of palm oil. The first one is the kind that you have to melt completely and the next one is the kind that I'm trying out that's called no stir palm oil. When I'm finished measuring those, I melt them in the microwave, and while I'm doing that, I measure my liquid oils. And I start with my avocado oil, and then my castor oil, and then finally my olive oil. I normally use olive oil pure or classic, but in this recipe, I'm using extra virgin olive oil, just because this has a darker color and it won't really matter for this recipe. Here are my hard oils that are melted and I measure in my cocoa butter and stir them till they're melted or if I have to microwave a little at the end I do but I don't like to get my cocoa butter very warm so I only microwave if it's necessary. Now that I have all of my ingredients cooling I prepare my colorants. For my yellows I have sunshine yellow mica from nurture soap and I have blinded by the light and yellow oxide from elements bath and body. For my medium green, I have groovy green mica, radioactive pigment, and blinded by the light, and these are all from Elements Bath and Body. For my dark green, I used radioactive green again, and then the chromium oxide green. For my pencil line, I used smooth coconut carmine from Elements Bath and Body, but you can also use activated charcoal. I just add a little olive oil to my colorants and I mix them on my plexiglass sheet with my palette knife. For this recipe, there's a lot of colorant because I'm making such a big recipe, so I made sure and mixed my ones that are more difficult, like my oxides and my neons first, and then I added in my micas. I usually save my tips for the ends of the videos, but since I have a little time here while I'm mixing my colorants, I just want to let you know what I've been doing lately with my colorants. I'm finding that micas alone seem to be a little bit muted, and I like that vibrant color, so I've been adding a little neon and a little oxide to whatever color I'm using. So for example, if I'm using green, I use the chromium oxide green and a little bit of the neon green. And so for the yellow, if I use a yellow mica, I use a little yellow oxide and a little of the yellow neon. And I'm finding that just really gives it a little punch and it really intensifies the mica. So if you're finding your micas are a little dull, just try adding a little neon and a little oxide to it. I also want to share a little bit about how I figure out my colorants. I've tested this groovy green mica before and it's a light green when you use it at one teaspoon per pound of oils, which is a really good rule of thumb to start with when you're dealing with colorants, especially micas. But since I know it's a little light and I wanted it to have a, like a medium tone, I added a little bit of neon to it in the radioactive green and the blinded by the light and I, I added a sixteenth of a teaspoon per pound of oils in each of those added with the one teaspoon per pound of oils of the groovy green. I remember when I first started mixing colorants, more than one colorant to make one color, and it's so much math and it was so overwhelming, but I don't like guessing at the same time. I want to know what I use so I can repeat that result if I liked it, or if I want to change it, I know how to change it because I know what I did originally. So, saying that, I want to let you know that I developed a colorant calculator with Elements Bath and & Body and it's all up and running right now and also that I have made a video to explain the colorant calculator and it's at Elements Bath & Body's YouTube channel. 
After I finished mixing the colorants, I added my liquid oils to my melted hard oils, and then I combined my sodium lactate with my lye water, and then I strained it into another pitcher. I used wasabi fragrance oil from Brambleberry. I divided my total amount of fragrance into three different containers. I'm pouring down a stick just so it doesn't make a mess and run down the container and onto the table. Next I add a piece of paper to the table just to protect the table from all that activated charcoal that's going to be blowing around. I add the activated charcoal after I pour the first and second layers. My husband and I made this mold with instructions from an ebook from Benjamin and Amanda Aaron and I will leave the link in the description on where I got this ebook. I have added my colorant and a half a teaspoon of kaolin clay and also my lye water to my oils. Once I stick blend that, I add one of my containers of fragrance that I split before. This fragrance accelerates, so I have to work quickly once I have it all incorporated. I use a powder sprayer to get a good layer of activated charcoal on my first layer of soap. And I use a bulb syringe to blow off any excess. It's a good idea to wear a mask when you're spraying this stuff because it really just gets in the air. Next, I prepare the layer that's going to be the medium shade of green. The kaolin clay that I added has been hydrated overnight. I didn't want it to speed up my mixture too much because the wasabi already accelerates a little bit. I poured some of the mixture into another pitcher so that I didn't have to lift that heavy pitcher because my wrist tends to give out sometimes when I'm lifting heavy objects like that. I stick blended this layer for probably a little bit too long and it sped up pretty fast. So I banged it down and did the best I could and it turned out fine. Okay, just one layer left and I add my kaolin clay and my colorant and then my lye water. Mix that in and then I add my fragrance. I'm pouring my batter over a spoon that I bent, just so it doesn't break the surface.
To force my soap through gel, I put it in the oven that was already preheated to the lowest setting, and then I turned my oven off and I left the oven light on. And I left that on overnight, and in the morning I just turned the oven light off and I let my soap come to room temperature in the oven. And then once it's back to room temperature, I can cut it. Off camera, I split my slab into four logs. And now I'm just splitting it into 10 bars for each of the logs. I really like the way this batch came out and I really like how the colors came out. So I'm going to have to keep on doing the trick where I use a little bit of oxides and a little bit of the neons to make that mica pop. I found an air bubble in between the layers and I just want to show you how I patch that. I have some of that same color left over from when I planed off the soap and I take a little bit and I press it into the hole and then I have a tool called a stylus that's used for dry embossing and it's a good tool because it's got a round point and if there's a cavity in there you can push it further in and make sure the hole's completely filled up. So I use that and then I use my detail tool to push it in there and smooth it out a little more and then I finish it off by making it a smooth surface with my palette knife. I really wish you could smell this batch. Wasabi is so fresh. It just fills the air. You would think that wasabi would be something that's spicy. This is not. It's just green and fresh and I just love it. And now let me tell you a little bit about what I learned from this batch. One thing that was really nice for this batch that I used was that bent spoon. I would recommend that over using a spatula to pour over and also I used it to smooth out that top yellow layer and it worked really well and I kind of wish I would have used that on the layer underneath. So in the future I'm going to try to remember to use that bent spoon. Also I tend to try to get every last drop of batter into that mold and I think sometimes I need to just get most of it in there and then have another mold ready to put the excess in because when I try to get the last bit of batter in there sometimes that makes my top uneven because it sets up a little and I think I just need to make my batch a little bit bigger and account for that excess and I'll just have a mold ready for it. I don't often make big batches like this but it's much more efficient and I was wondering if any of you that make bigger batches know, does it go through gel easier? I got a little bit of silicone rash on this batch and it's just where it gets the edges that touch the silicone have little bumps in, or pits in them and I accounted for this and I planed it all off and it was fine but I just wondered if I got it too hot and if bigger batches go through gel easier. So if you know about that, if you could just leave a comment that would be great. I really loved using this mold. It is the perfect size, so if you don't have a mold that's the size you want, if you want to make your own mold, I would recommend this ebook. The only problem was we used the wrong kind of silicone, so it was our own fault. So you could see the mold was a little flimsy, but it did the job. It was fine, and once you get the batter in there, it would stick to the sides. But next time, if we pour this mold again, we would use a stronger silicone. Another thing that I learned is now that I have a bigger slab that I need to split, I need to come up with a better way of cutting it. 
I rigged up a way to cut it with my wire cutter and it didn't work very well. You can see that one of the loaves got messed up because it started to fall out of the thing that I had to run the, my wire cutter on to cut it straight. So I need to come up with one of those log splitters where you can just kind of push it through and a wire cuts it. You can kind of push it through like you're closing a drawer. The way that I did it, it's not very feasible and I would need another person to hold the log so it doesn't fall out. For one of my next videos, I'm going to show how I test my colorants so I can have little swatches. So when I'm trying to design a badge, I can just go to my colorant swatches and see which color would be perfect. So stay tuned for that. Mad Mike has sent me a, a bunch of gorgeous colors and I'm going to test them. And so I'll show how I do that. When I was new to soap making, I really struggled to find anything about color. And I guess having an art background, I always loved color. It's a big thing. I want it to be right. So between making your own color swatches and the colorant calculator at Elements Bath and Body, I think that will give you some confidence with your color choices. I just want to share with you that I have a website now and I'm slowly getting things added but I do have a gallery and I also have a little bit of information about me and I have a shop so if you're interested take a look. If you're new to my channel I just want to say welcome and if you found this video helpful please just give me a thumbs up. If you want to see my next video just hit the subscribe button and also the bell for notifications and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Have a great day.